Shaman and Tarnished of all ages, how would you like to wield two of the most beautiful spells in the game while also being an unstoppable dealer of death? Why not combine beauty and practicality into one of the silliest builds I've seen in a long time? And I don't mean silly like a wacky, wavy, inflatable arm flail and tube man, I mean silly like god is it strong and pretty to look at. So what's going on today? Well it's a combination of Elden Stars, a legendary incantation that fires off a slow moving tracking orb that fires off loads of smaller tracking orbs as it travels, and also Star Shower, a sorcery that fires out six projectiles with heavy tracking and great damage too. You may be asking why not Stars of Rune as that is arguably stronger if everything hits, but the main point of this is the tracking, and against human players at least, Stars of Rune is relatively easy to dodge, just walk in diagonal line for a bit and it's done, no problem. Star Shower on the other hand is six mistimed projectiles with insanely good tracking on anything that isn't just a foot away from your face, and so a beautiful combo is born here. Use Elden Stars, and then while Elden Stars slowly homes in on your target, pelting them with tiny little pops of holy damage, spam Star Shower for tons of higher damage, higher tracking projectiles of magic damage. Essentially, you turn the game into a bullet hell. Not for you, but for your enemy. Call an ambulance! Call an ambulance! but not for me. This build is arguably focused around PvP, as you may have guessed, but it is still absolutely nuts in PvE as well, as you've been watching it destroy Melania entirely. Why is this? Well, quite simply, it's the way that bosses are coded. Most bosses have the ability to do an evasion or dodge of some sort, and they tend to be quite good about doing this with ranged attacks, especially with magic. The exception to this is multicasting spells, by which I mean spells with multiple damage instances, or delayed launches. Bosses will do one dodge each time that you finish a cast, and the dodge happens the second that the cast is complete. As a result, both Elden Stars and Star Shower don't really get dodged by bosses, at least not properly at all, so this combo that is nasty in PvP is pretty much just as nasty for PvE. While this combo can destroy anyone if they don't manage to close the gap on you, one recommendation that I will vig very early on for this is in PvP, you should also have Carry and Slicer on your bar. The reason for this is, well, if someone manages to get really up close on you, you simply won't be able to cast Elden Stars or Star Shower. They both have a decently long windup, and neither one of them works properly at close range. They shine with distance. And so if someone comes right up on top of you, just start slashing at them with Carry and Slicer until they decide it's better to back off just a bit. Also worth mentioning, it is a small buff, but this build is much more makeable now than it was before, as in patch 1.07 they reduced the FP cost of a whole load of spells, including Elden Stars. So what makes this build run then? What makes it tick? What makes it so strong? Well, of of course we have our spells themselves, but we also need the implements to cast them, right? Well, as this build is based around both an incantation and a sorcery, it is of course very heavily split into both intelligence and faith, and so the answer for which casting sources we use is simply the ones that scale with both intelligence and faith. For your right hand, I recommend the Prince of Death staff. This boosts death sorceries, which doesn't really help us, but it is the highest scaling staff with our attribute split. As well, you can put spinning weapon on it if you want, it is the only Ash of War that it takes and it doesn't even do that much damage with the setup but it's better than literally nothing, I suppose. To get this staff, head to the Nameless Eternal City, Site of Grace, in the deeper depths. From there, simply climb up the roots and rooftops to the tower you can see northeast of here, and you'll find this staff waiting for you. For your left hand, you should have the Golden Order Seal. This is found at the Minor Air Tree Church in the south of Outer Lane Dell. For your head armor slot, you'll want Lusat's Glintstone Crown, as this actually boosts the damage of Star Shower by about 10%, at the cost of slightly higher FP consumption. And this is found in the Celia High hideaway location after completing the sorceress sell in quest line, simply head back to Lusat's body in there and loot it off of his not so fresh corpse. The rest of your armor set is up to you, so fashion it up however you want to look within our relatively low endurance. Then for talismans we have the Godfrey icon, this boosts the damage of charged spells and weapon skills by 15% which is a nice big bump, and to get this one you need to defeat the boss at the Golden Lineage Everjail just east of the lift that you take up to reach the Altus Plateau. You will also want yourself the Graven Mass Talisman for an 8% damage increase to all sorceries, and this one is on top of Albanaric Rise, this tower in the Consecrated Snowfields. For PvE, you'll want the Magic Scorpion Charm Talisman for a 12% damage boost to all magic damage, and this comes from the Preceptor Saluvis questline. As well, you'll want the Sacred Scorpion Charm for a 12% damage bonus to your holy damage, and you get this from defeating the NPC Invader outside of the Smoldering Church in Kaelid. Having both of these equipped will make you a fair bit squishier, yes, but this build is about keeping as much distance as possible between you and your target, so honestly, just avoid being hit by the boss, as silly as that sounds to give his advice. As far as PvP, you instead want 
want the Flux Canvas Talisman for an 8% boost to your incantation damage as well, and the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman for a significant boost to your physical damage negation. For your Flask of Wondrous Physic, today we have a green mixture. Blue and yellow make green. Specifically, you want the Magic Shrouding Crack Tier for a 20% boost to magic damage for 3 minutes after drinking, and the Holy Shrouding Crack Tier for a 20% boost to holy damage for 3 minutes after drinking. Both of these actually also come from the same location, which is nice and convenient as well, and that is the boss located at the Minor Air Tree in Northeastern Liernia. Past that, we have just the remaining spells. Obviously, we have the three that I mentioned at the start in Elden Stars, Star Shower, and Carrion Slicer, but what else are we running here to make this work? Well, the answer is simply the buffs. Of course, we are running Golden Vow, which gives you a 15% buff to all types of damage that you deal for 80 seconds after casting, as well as a 10% damage negation buff, and this is found in the Corpse Tent Shack on the eastern side of Mount Gelmir. And then we also have Terra Magica, which boosts all magic damage done either within the circle that it creates or within three seconds of leaving the circle by 35%, which of course is an absolutely massive boost. With all of these boosts added together though, our Elden Stars is buffed by about 67%, which is quite meaty, but even better is Star Shower, which is buffed by about 115%, more than doubling its total damage. As you've been seeing, the result is absolute destruction. Whether your wishes be to kill in PvE or PvP, this build can do it anywhere and look great while doing it too. Finally then, let's talk about the attributes that you'll want to truly make this sing. If you're at level 150, you want to hit 50 Faith and 50 Intelligence, 60 Vigor for comfortable play, and then you can get up to 32 Mind, which gives you a decent FP pool to work with, which is important as this playstyle does burn through FP quite quickly. If you are higher level than this even, you'll want to boost up both your Intelligence and Faith, with a preference leaning slightly towards Intelligence, as Star Shower is your real main source of damage. Elden Stars is more just a somewhat passive damage output that continues onwards while you spam cast Star Shower. One final note then, while this build does excellently both in duels and the team format of PvP, I highly recommend making a point of getting killing blows in the team battles and free-for-all. Obviously killing your enemy is how you win, but if another member of your team in a team battle gets the last hit, you don't get flask refills, and if you run out of FP, you are pretty much useless. While this does do an insane amount of chip damage just continually, which essentially allows you to make your melee team members absolutely run amok and destroy the opponents from a weakened state, you also want to try and secure a kill sometimes yourself just to make sure that you can keep on doing this permanently. And that just about does it everyone. An absolutely awesome build based around stars of two kinds that I just like to call the Elden Shower. Don't question me. I hope you enjoy playing around with this build if you make it for yourself, and I hope you enjoyed watching this build video. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye